Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Gardens. And if this is the first time you stop by my channel, my name is Mary and we are today going to be focusing on container gardening. Specifically, if you have covered porches or under trees and you would like to have some beautiful plants to grow there, this is a great video for you today. And because we're doing containers, we want to talk a little bit about what kind of soil to use and answer a very big question. Have you ever wondered whether you can reuse potting soil from year to year? Well, I have a little video clip that's going to follow just now, and it's going to give you some tips on how to deal with that and save money. When potting time comes in the spring, we have two kinds of pots in our gardens, or at least I do. I have smaller ones such as this, and then I have really big ones like this one over here. And this year I'm going to try a new method. I have emptied out entirely my new pots and I'm going to be placing new soil this Vigoro potting soil um, in the pot, completely filling it, getting it ready for when I have the time to go out and buy my new container plants for this one. So I'm just going to be dumping it in till it is pretty full near the top of the pot, which will allow me some room for the new plants and their root balls that are going to be placed in here. But with this larger pot here, I'm going to be digging out some of the existing leftover soil and I'm going to refurbish it. Now in the past, I have used regular potting soil like the Vigoro you just saw as a sort of a revitalizer for my pot. So I would revitalize my large pots by removing all of the old annuals that had died over the winter and digging out, you know, the major part of the roots, smaller roots such as these are okay to leave in there because they will sort of self compost in the pot during the course of the year. However, some of the research I have been doing, I think you might be interested to know that a better way to revitalize your pot is to remove about a third of the potting soil. This way, guys, when you have an entirely huge pot like this one, and you really don't want to dig out this entire pot with its old potting soil and then spend the money to buy, it would probably take two to three bags to fill up this pot. So that seems like a waste of money. And so the best way I have just more recently learned is that you can revitalize your potting soil with compost. And I'm going to be using today exactly composted steer manure. So I have a bucket here and I'm going to be digging out some of the top part of this soil. We'll do that first. Now I have a bucket full of soil that I have removed. I will just throw that in one of my garden beds around the backyard. And before I add the compost, I'm going to dig in and loosen up the remaining potting soil that is actually a couple of years old, two or three because you may know that in our pots, we want the soil to be aerated quite well, give the roots a chance to grow down and be very healthy. So here's my steer manure blend. It is a blend of composted steer manure and just regular old composted materials. I'm gonna dump this in to fill up my pot. So 
I will break up any clumps in the compost. And next, we need to mix it up with the existing potting soil. So we're mixing it up just like you would mix up a, a kitchen cake batter. <laughs> because the compost contains bacteria and fungi, which will bring life back to the potting soil that is here in my pot already, and it will be a healthy, a, uh, a healthy soil that is alive with microscopic little creatures, which is what all plants need in order to live healthy and strong. That's exactly what we want to have happen in this pot. So to revitalize your soil, try and save money by not emptying out a large pot every year. Go ahead and try using this year compost as an amendment for your potting soil that might be three years old or so. In addition to using the compost to bring nutrients to my soil to make my plants healthy and bloom much during this season, <clears throat> this bloom booster, which has a higher level, it is not a balanced uh, fertilizer, like a 10-10-10, but instead, it has a 52% uh, amount in the ingredients of phosphate. And phosphate is the one uh, nutrient that is needed for encouraging blooms on your plants. Since we all like to see the flowers that we have planted blooming profusely to give color to our garden, and that's what annuals are great for in our pots, this bloom booster will really help them along and you can just follow the instructions on the container. I do it every other week or every two weeks to continuous, continuously feed my plants and that is because when you um, are planting in a pot you have drain holes in the bottom of your pot and water runs out and guess what runs out with that water the nutrients in the soil. So this is a way that you can continuously add more nutrients to encourage that blooming that we all love. You can see that I like to prepare my pots before the last freeze so that when I go out shopping for my arm loads of plants for all of my containers, I'm ready to just go get right into it and plant them and get those plants settled and started to grow and look beautiful. So we all like to have flowering plants to bring that bright touch of color everywhere around in our on our porches or under our trees. But there aren't that many for us to pick from. And I will highlight those today. But basically, we're really going to be focusing on the best shade plants to bring color for you. And that includes many foliage plants where we are choosing them based on the color of the leaves. And first we're going to focus just a minute on a very old gardening idea for containers. And that is using thrillers, fillers, and spillers. Those are the names we give to the three categories of plants which do different jobs in your container to make a very beautiful composition. And thrillers are taller plants that can be used in the middle of a pot or at the back of a pot to sort of stand out and give some beauty flowing up and out of your pot. So those are the thrillers. The fillers are the plants that are sort of medium tall and bushy and really fill up the space with color within your container. And then lastly, spillers are plants that trail out and over your pot and give that sort of spilling of 
beautiful color and foliage from your pot. I think you get the concept. <laughs> and you may have heard it before because it's a very common old gardening uh, kind of adage in your composition. So today what I'm doing with you is I'm going to give you lists of plants and share with you pictures of them as well uh, so that you can have some ideas and make some list, actually like a shopping list for you when you go out to buy your container plants this year. We're going to start with our thrillers. Now I have a, just a few and let's get started with the first one on my list which is coleus. Whether you're familiar with coleus or not, here's a couple of things you should know. Of course, let's take some a look at some pictures. Let's take a look at some pictures where we can see some different color options. Coleus come in a myriad of colors uh, from sort of chartreuse green, you have your multicolored coleus, you have your reddish colored leaves. All of them add very beautiful bright colors to your composition. And they, coleus have the ability to grow quite tall during the season, so they can be used as a thriller in your pot. One thing, take a look at this picture here now, that it's important to know about coleus is that they do produce flowers as they grow and you should pinch off those flowers when you see them emerging. That will keep the plant focused on producing more leaves, becoming more bushy. And as a matter of fact, in the early season to prevent your coleus getting tall and super leggy, you know, where you have long stems coming up with not very many leaves, well then you can just pinch back a stem right above a leaf, which will encourage branching and more bushiness for your plant. And that actually works with any of these foliage plants that we're going to be talking about today. And let's move on and kind of go through these plants a little bit more quickly because I can get wordy sometimes. <laughs> Our uh, next thriller is dragon wing begonia. And this is a flowering plant that is spectacular, really provides beautiful blooms in a pretty deep shade, actually. This first one is a picture of a dragon wing begonia that I grew in one of my pots. And then we're going to have a close up following of the blooms. They're just delightful. And so if you really do like flowers, you must get some of these plants. Uh, another fabulous thriller, which is very common, you can find it at Walmart, anywhere, and it is called Spike. Here's a picture. Sometimes I put two or three spikes in the back of a pot or in the center of a pot in order to get that tall, graceful uh, leaf formation that flows out. It works very well to bring that uh, attention to height. And lastly are Rex begonias. And here we have some photos of Rex begonias for you to see what they look like. The first one is called escargot, and as you can see, it has sort of a spiral in its leaf, which gives it that name. As you know, escargot means snail in French. Rex begonias have so much beautiful leaf color that they just make your whole container design look more colorful and interesting. Let's move on to our filler plants now. And we can start with Persian Shield. And here's a picture of Persian Shield. One of the big attractions for this plant is the really beautiful, shiny color of the leaves with that deep purple color. And they also like to be pinched back to make them more bushy. 
Another spectacular flowering shade plant is this lovely fuchsia. Notice the two-tone blooms. Aren't they gorgeous? And next we'll have a close-up of that bloom. Really uh, very, very stunning in your shade garden. All right, a perfect filler for your containers is asparagus fern. And here are a couple of pictures of this plant for you. I hope you, with these pictures that it can help you to identify these plants when you go shopping um, this spring. But asparagus fern just has these tiny, tiny little fronds and they have a different texture that make it look so pretty in a container that has large leaves. Now you have this very ethereal kind of look to the asparagus, asparagus fern. It's a great filler. Now, impatience can be both a thriller and a filler because if you have the right conditions, impatience can grow quite, quite tall during the summer. And so it can turn out to be a thriller in your container. But with these photos here that you're seeing, it is very easy to grow and blooms consistently throughout the summer. And that's what we like. We like those colorful flowers. So that's one plant I highly recommend. Now I will give you one warning about this plant. And that is that there is a virus that is attacking impatience particularly, and it is called necrotic spot virus. And I want to show you a picture here of a planting that I did a couple of years ago where my impatience caught this necrotic spot virus. And this is a disease that cannot be cured. If you see it in your garden, the best thing you can do is to dig it up and throw it in the trash immediately. Don't put it in your compost pile because it will spread the virus. So you want to get rid of it completely out of your garden or out of your container. And so what I do in any pots in which I'm going to be planting um, impatience, I am very careful to clean them out with a uh, solution using dish soap and also bleach in a ratio of one to nine. So one cup of bleach to nine cups of water, for example, and really clean any pot out well in which you're going to be planting impatience. This will kill any virus that could possibly be left over or have infected even a small amount. Uh, through the previous season. Do be careful with impatience and the spreading of the virus. It spreads very quickly from plant to plant, but it only attacks your impatience. Okay, and then let's take a look at polka dot plant. And I have a couple of photos here where you can see that it ha can have different colors of spots. It can have red, pink, uh, green leaves with white spots. It's a very versatile plant. It can grow so well and really thrive in shade and really give some beautiful color to your containers. Now Rex begonias, if you buy a tiny one in a pot at a nursery, you find a pretty one you like, you might want to use it as a filler because it's going to take a while for it to fill out and grow and not be but as tall. Another filler uh, that is a flowering plant is called Terenia. And Terenia has the common name of uh, wishbone plant. And that's because if you look at the flowers close up, it looks like there's a little wishbone in the center. They're very cute flowers. They come in a multitude of colors. Here's some photos. And I want you to know that uh, for me, I personally have had trouble successfully growing my terrenias, but they can act as a filler in your pot. Uh, you might want to try it. Maybe you'll have better luck than I and have some beautiful flowers growing. Okay, 
Now to our spillers, and we have quite a few choices here. One is a plant called Creeping Jenny, and I have a couple photos for you to see as so you can become familiar with how they look. Um, one caution about Creeping Jenny, now I don't have this problem in Colorado because it's so dry, but if you live in the Midwest or the South or the Northeast, um, you're going to have trouble with Creeping Jenny if it escapes from your pot and grows into your soil of your garden because it can be very invasive. Now, yeah. another is this Tradescantia Sabrina, where I have a couple of photos again. And this plant is a beautiful trailer with beautiful colors. I just adore it. It's commonly used as a house plant. And guys, I actually do grow it during the winter time in my, in my house. I actually bring some of the pots out from my indoors to the outdoors in the summertime where it really thrives. Even in darker shade, it will grow like crazy once it is outdoors. I guess it likes being in its natural environment. <laughs> now, Vinca vine, and I have some photos here for you. This is really a great plant that uh, is a vigorous grower. It will do so well in dark shade, surprisingly, um, and it spreads quite well. If you plant it directly into your garden soil, it will grow long vines, and the vines at each leaf node will grow roots and produce a second plant at that location, and then a third plant as the vine grows. And if you like that, like for me, it is very cold tolerant over the winter, so it comes right back. I'm in zone four, and it comes back every year. And sometimes instead of spending my money on buying new plants, I actually go out to my garden and uh, dig up some of these volunteers that were growing in the ground and cut off the long vines and then plant it into my pot for another spiller. To Let me introduce you to Tahitian Bridal Veil, which I have grown often as an indoor house plant, but oh my goodness, in the summer it certainly thrives here in Colorado and I think anywhere in the country. Take a look at these tiny white blooms that it grows as the summer passes and it's something you all might really want to consider as a spiller for your containers this summer. Purple heart plant, here you can see what it looks like. And I just love this plant as well. Kind of like Persian Shield. It's very purpley, but Persian Shield has sort of a shiny texture to it, whereas the purple heart plant, which is also the botanical name is Tradescantia pallida. It is in the same family as the Tradescantia zebrina we mentioned earlier. Purple heart plant has sort of fuzzy leaves, little hairs on them. And it just, uh, the more sunshine it gets, the more dark and bright purple the leaves become. But it grows well in dappled shade, partial shade, and even deep shade. Lastly, I'm listing Terenia here as a spiller because if you plant it near the edge of your pot, it will spill over with its colorful flowers. So it can be both a filler and a spiller for you in your shade containers. One last thing, I have created a shopping list for you to use when you go out looking for your shade plants. And here's a close up of this shopping list so you can see it better. But on this shopping list, I have a place where you can put the name of your pot and then the name and number of plants to buy. And as you can see on mine, I have my black urn, my purple pot, my gray-footed pot, and of course I know where these are in my own garden. And before I shop, I'm going to be putting everything I need 
for each of these pots. So I'll have one day where I will go from nurseries to big box stores. I even go to Walmart sometimes because I can get some good deals. To get a copy of this shopping list, there is a link down below in my description box where you can click on that link it will bring up the shopping list for you and you can print it out on your printer and take it with you when you're shopping. So my friends, I hope you have a very fun and successful year gardening this summer and that your containers grow as beautiful and bountiful as you would like to see them. So this is Mary saying bye for now.